the NRC's uh, Office of Investigations was created in 1982, which was two weeks after a hearing I chaired about a case where NRC officials whitewashed a safety investigation after they showed it to a former NRC chairman who had been hired by the subject of the investigation. I recently wrote a letter to the NRC about my concerns that the independence of this office was being eroded, that the Office of General Counsel may have inappropriately attempted to interfere with a recent investigation, and that the staff who assisted with the investigation uh, was being retaliated against. In response, I was told that you, Madam Chairman, and others had referred those concerns to the NRC's Inspector General. That is why I was so disturbed when I obtained a copy of a draft proposal that you authored that directed the Office of General Counsel to effectively take over and reorganize the Office of Investigations and to limit the resources and the types of investigations that could be conducted in the first place. Um, you even did this before the NRC Inspector General completed his work. When Chairwoman Boxer and I sent you a letter conveying our strong concerns about this proposal, you did not respond to us. Instead, you directed your staff to deny the very existence of the proposal in the first place, even though I had been provided a copy of the document. So, uh, Madam Chair, is this proposal, which unquestionably was prepared and circulated by you, still being considered? At the moment, it's not being considered, but let me tell you that the, the memo, the draft memo that you're referring to was only circulated to the senior, very senior management of the agency. And it was a draft to get, and to my colleagues here, of course, it was a draft to get their feedback. Uh, never, and nowhere in that memo will you find any contemplation of any reorganization of the Office of Investigations. What we are trying to ensure here as commissioners is that we have an effective enforcement process because that's critical to our agency's ability to enforce our regulations. Well, the, the document actually said that the Office of uh, Investigations couldn't do the same work it said it couldn't have the same resources. It said that the general counsel had to direct every action um, that was going to be taken. I uh, do not agree with your analysis there. That's not what it said. The, we, uh, only, uh, the Office of General Counsel was only cited to, in terms of providing guidance. And I, I would ask my colleagues to weigh in because they have seen this memo. All right, any of the other members of the commission? Wish I'd, I'd like to respond, Senator Markey. I agree with the chairman's response. I was, uh, as long as, as the other commissioners, offered the chance to review this memo. Uh, there were cons I'm going to comment. This is a personal uh, viewpoint. There were some concerns uh, in the organization. I think it was a very responsible act by the chairman to take the initiative to address a problem. That memo did not a direct reorganization of the Office of Investigations. And I think that the actions that the chairman has circulated as a draft proposal were responsible and appropriate. Any other members wishing to comment? Commissioner. Senator, in the feedback I provided to Chairman McFarland, I also indicated that I viewed the proposal as an opportunity to look at strengthening the coordination between the Office of Investigations, Enforcement, and General Counsel, and my feedback to her was that uh, I supported having the NRC staff look at that and see if any enhancements could be made. So do you support the continued complete independence of this office? This, the office should be independent to the degree that it does report back to our executive director of operations. That is the structure of the Office of, Indi of Investigations. It's not the inspector general. That is a separate and distinct office at our agency. Do each of you agree with that, that it should maintain its independence? Senator, I, what I agree, I agree that the Office of Investigations has to have the capability to carry out its professional uh, responsibilities as an investigative office. 
Uh, I worked closely with them when I was general counsel and an attorney in NRC for 25 years in that uh, sometimes there are disagreements between the lawyers and investigators about where to go, uh, but essentially the, the office has the ability to, to uh, make its recommendations, to uh, cooperate with the Justice Department in appropriate cases. That's what's important, uh, and that's what I would defend. Should it be able, a Commissioner, to do whatever investigations it deems to be appropriate? Essentially, it makes the, the judgment call as to the, the investigative, uh, what, what uh, its investigative work, uh, workload or the investigations it pursues. Obviously, they're in, in the, and you get this sometimes in the constraints of when an investigation is underway, you have, uh, because that's the nature of our, you know, that's the nature of the American legal system in terms of objections that persons may make, for example, whether I have, you know, if I'm someone who is a subject investigation, do I have to testify? There are, are ways of resolving those things through subpoena, through other types of actions. But essentially, the, the judgment call is essentially within the office to, to carry out its, its mission. All right. Well, should it have to report to the general counsel during the course of an investigation? It doesn't report to the general counsel, but it works with the general counsel's office. Should it have to? Yes, because as part of it's it's a it's part of our overall enforcement process, and our overall enforcement process encompasses three of our offices: the Office of Investigations, who carry out the investigations, but they need to work with our general counsel's office, the lawyers, in informing those investigations, and then because this is part of our enforcement of our regulations process that they have to work together with the Office of Enforcement. So they all have to work together, and that's what we wanted to look at. So, and should it be able to be free to pursue any investigation? That's my question to you. Do you agree with that? It, it, it does have the ability to pursue any investigation. They, they have not been pre should prevented it continue, from that. Should it continue to have that ability? That's my question to you. It, it should continue to have the ability to develop investigations as it sees fit, but it does have to work with the other offices because it's part of our overall enforcement process. General, you're a former general counsel, sir. Um, can, you, can you help us to sort this out? Because we want to have vigorous oversight that's taking place. So uh, should they have the ability to be free to pursue any investigation? Well, Senator, essentially, I think as the chairman's saying, they essentially are free to uh, pursue investigations. Mm -hmm. What the point I was trying to make is that there are uh, within the both in as matter of administrative law, uh, constitutional law, there are uh, sort of there are sometimes limits on that with respect to is it a matter within the scope of the agency's competence? Are they investigating something that is a matter that is within the NRC? Are they carrying out the appropriate uh, uh, protections that are required under the Administrative Procedure Act or other statute to do it? And th those are the those are the only caveats that 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 I would uh, would put on that. So let me just again kind of clarify: as long as they continue to operate within their legal authority, should they be permitted to continue operating the way they have been historically? in your opinion, as the former general counsel? Yeah, in, in my view, yes. It's within the, again, within the framework of what their responsibilities are, what, they're, uh, what the NRC's responsibilities are, they're able to do that. And do you think there's a reason to limit the resources and types of investigations that could be conducted in the first place? Because that is something that there is a draft proposal that is out there to um, look at this as an issue. There is no draft proposal to limit their resources. And it, there is a draft proposal to look at the whole enforcement process. Well, we have a copy of a draft proposal that would limit the resources. You're saying there is no draft proposal? That's correct. All right. Then there is a disagreement between the committee and, uh, and the agency. Um, and, uh, and so we're going to have to uh, resolve that. Uh, because uh, obviously we have a document that says that that is not the case. Um, so, uh, so you are not, in, in fact, uh, supporting a proposal to erode 
the mission or the independence while they're in the middle of an investigation right now? I'm supporting a proposal to improve and ensure that our enforcement process is as efficient and effective as possible because as, an, as a regulator, we are not going to be able to regulate properly unless we can have an effective enforcement process to enforce our regulations. Okay. Well, um, I have a document. Uh, I'm not going to introduce it into the official record right now. Um, and uh, we do have a, a disagreement between uh, the committee uh, and the commission on this. Uh, I'm not going to introduce it into the record at this point in time, uh, but we're going to have to have a, a private discussion and negotiation between the commission uh, and the committee uh, over this um, document uh, where we are in fundamental disagreement. Um, so with that, let me just say that there is a second roll call uh, on the floor of the Senate. So I'm going to run over and make the roll call. We'll, we'll stand in um, recess. Um, um, Uh, I'm told that, uh, all right, I'm told that the, so the, the, uh, the chair is back. So let me ask one final question then. Chairman McFarland, the recent litigation challenging NRC's assertion that spent nuclear fuel could be stored at reactor sites indefinitely cost the agency between $250,000 and $300,000 in legal fees uh, and cost the Department of Justice additional taxpayer dollars as well. There are more than 300 uh, contentions pending on the Yucca Mountain license proceeding, uh, and contentions cost uh, 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 more than litigation to resolve because the process for resolving them is much more complicated. Is it safe to say that the legal cost of resolving the Yucca Mountain contentions is likely to exceed 300 times the cost the agency absorbed on the other spent fuel litigation? that it would be much, much higher than the 75 to $90 million? Yes, yeah, yeah, well, I don't know about the, the math that you've uh, elaborated, but what I can tell you is that it would cost in excess of probably $300 million. It would cost in excess of $300 million. So I think that's very important for us to have on the record because uh, clearly this is um, becoming a more and more costly uh, enterprise for the federal government. So uh, I thank you, Madam Chair, and I yield back. Thank you. I understand that you were asking about a document, and I'm going to just follow through on that, but you should go to make your vote. Um, the NRC is still withholding two categories of documents. Okay. That Senator Markey talked about. And I don't know whether Senator Markey read... Um, Senator Markey, did you read into the record the renowned constitutional scholar Mort Rosenberg, what he said? No, I didn't. Okay. Not. And this is why this is critical. When you get confirmed, you answer in the affirmative to turn over documents. Now you say there's no such document when there is such a document. That's a problem. That's a real problem before this committee. We don't swear people in here. We don't do that. But you are under oath. That's the rule. You are considered under oath. I don't care what the general counsel is whispering at this point. Anyone here is considered under oath, and they cannot say anything to the contrary but the truth. Under 18 U.S.C. 1001, you could read it. You have to be truthful to Congress. Now, there's been a denial of a document. We have the document. Thank God there are people in the NRC. You know, it's interesting, Chairman, because your discussion about how great morale is, and it, listen, I'm sure it's true for most people, but for some of the senior people, and I say this to the four commissioners, they're calling us all the time, telling us that safety is not being followed. Now, renowned constitutional scholar Mort Rosenberg said that NRC's reasons for withholding these documents demonstrate, and I will quote, I'm glad senior counsel's here, a profound misunderstanding of Congress's investigatory power that they misstate court decisions, they ignore, quote, overwhelmingly contrary case law, 
that supports the committee's right to receive the materials, and they show, quote, a lack of awareness of over 90 years of congressional investigations in which agencies have had to give Congress what it asked for. What's more, last year, Congress enacted statutory legislation, language, requiring NRC to respond to congressional requests. So I'm going to ask the four of you who remain, because the chairman has already not dealt with me in a fair way, in my opinion, and we've had to go through hell and back to get anything, and we still don't have documents. We'll get them, because there's whistleblowers in the agency who are helping us. So the truth will come out. But I want to ask the other four, will each of you follow the law and give the committee what it has asked for? Madam Chairman, I, I agree with you that you have an important oversight role. And my view is that NRC should work with the committee uh, to provide documents when you request them. Thank you. The, our focus should be on providing information that's requested, not withholding it. There are sometimes going to be sensitive issues that we've got to work through, but we should be working through those issues. And we should work through them together. Yes, Because absolutely. the bottom line is we're all, we all care about the safety of the people. You know, I do, you do. So why, why are we in this tug of war? You can't see my papers. Uh, let me ask Commissioner Svinicky, will you turn over, will you vote to give the committee what it asks for, as you promised to do when you took your oath? Chairman Boxer, I have supported our continued engagement with you and your staff. That's on not document. the question. Engagement, what does that mean? Discussion? I'm asking if you would vote to give us the documents we request. I have um, been part of the deliberation on providing the documents over the last couple of years, and I have supported the outcomes as articulated by Chairman McFarland, where we would continue to respect the oversight role and work with you and your staff. Well, the chairman denied us. Go ahead, Ms. Strauss. Madam Chairman, uh, I agree with Commissioner Svenicky. I've been involved in these decisions as well. I believe we have followed the law as we understand it. I know that we have sent several letters to this committee requesting to meet in person with us, and we've not been able to arrange those meetings. And so, Well, we're meeting in person. What is this? This is how many oversight hearings have we had? This is the 10th. You can tell it to me out here in the real world. You don't have to think tell the it to me sent whisper in my ear about it. And we sent uh, very clear letters in November and December of last year addressing this topic. Uh, I've read the Rosenberg memo, and I believe that the position we've taken is uh, still okay. consistent with the well, law. Well, okay. This is going to be a big problem because we asked for documents, not a meeting, privately, secretly, and we, not, we didn't get them. And this is, this, this is serious stuff. And your counsel is telling you things that are in absolute conflict with renowned constitutional scholars. So you may wind up in a courtroom pretty soon. Mr. Burns. I'll echo what uh, Commissioner Barron said. I think there's, uh, and it's extraordinary powers of the, of the committee and of the Congress to get documents, to get information it needs. I've read the Rosenberg memo, and I've read some other things Thank you for doing on it. That. But what I, what I want to say is, is that I think there is a very limited, limited set where there may be some questions, and there may be some issues there. But my commitment is to work with the committee and to, uh, to uh, assure that it needs, but at the same time assuring whatever, whatever issues that there are need to be protected uh, are protected. Well, let me just say, there's no legal restriction on our getting papers, period. That's the truth. And, you know, if you go back in history, one thing we know about America, we, our people want transparency, and they don't like secrecy. And, uh, of course, if somebody's, if there's a paper that shows a certain technology and there's a right to, to make sure people don't know how to make a certain part, we understand that. And we've agreed to that, okay? So... Here's the deal. I'm not encouraged by the 2-2 two -two split here on papers. And I am just saying that this is an area of deep concern and is not going away. And I want to ask the four of you who are, re who are remaining a very straightforward question. Because we may be without a fifth person for a while. We don't know how long it will take. And as you know, 4-4, four, four, I mean 2-2, two -two, <laughs> equals nothing getting done. And it puts a burden on each of you 
to try and reach out and listen to the other side. I could give you an example in this committee. As you know, there's lots of disagreements here. We have gotten together on many pieces of legislation, highways, water, protecting animals, all the things, Superfund cleanups, all kinds of issues. We've set aside our differences. And I am asking you, particularly on this series of 12 recommendations, which could mean life and death. That's not hyperbole. Life and death to my people and to people all over the country. I only have one plant left, OK? But there's 500,000 people living within 50 miles of that plant. I'm asking you, and we could look at the other chart that I don't know what the other chart says, but I can tell you we have reviewed this and we know not one of these has been implemented fully. Will you, each of you, work with each other to try and get the maximum number of these post-Fukushima recommendations by your own staff put in place within the next six months? Will you work in that effort? Uh, soon to be Chairman Barron. Uh, that would be news to me, but. <laughs> um, well, Commissioner Barron. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I absolutely. I guess that's what I would like to see, but that's not on the horizon <laughs> well, at this point. Thank you for that, Madam Chairman. Yeah, Commissioner um, Barron. Uh, I absolutely commit to work with my colleagues to implement um, the recommendations in an expeditious way. And will you reach out to those that you would normally not see eye to eye with? Because that's the critical part here. The, all five of us talk all the time. Okay. And I, I, I think I have very well, good they're relationships only be building four. those relationships. There'll Pretty be soon. four, and I'm and that confident means, that we're going to that be able to That means in order to move from A to B, there needs to be someone giving. And one of you is going to have to really work and with the other side to say, you know what, that makes sense. Will you be willing to do that kind of extraordinary effort to get this done? Yes, Chairman Boxer. Thank I've you. had many colleagues come and go from the commission. The, the two new members constitute a very significant new blood for us. And, and I agree with you that a 2-2, is that's not a great outcome for the United right. States. So we need to re-engage and work together. Excellent. I pledge to do that. Well, I really appreciate that. And, and Mr. Ostendorf. Chairman Boxer, I'm committed to working with my colleagues. Excellent. And? As am I. Okay. Chairman and I'm Boxer, asking, can, I, can I just interrupt for one second? No, no. I just want to correct the no, record. No, no, no. I'll give you your time in a moment. Just, just a minute. That was kind of a general response from you two. I'm saying on those 12 issues, to get them in place within the next six months, many of them, will you work together to do that? Will you try to get that done? Can you answer that, please? Mr. Ostendorf. Chairman Boxer, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that all those can be implemented in the next six months. I didn't say all 12. I said some of them. I, I think we are making uh, strong progress, and I think we're continued to, uh, we'll continue to work towards implementing those as quickly as we can. So you will work with all colleagues, even though it might be a 2-2 situation, to get some of these into place? I don't see the, a 2-2 situation on the Commission as being a bar to moving forward. Excellent. And Mr. Burns? No, nor do I. And I think, again, looking when I was with the agency as a general counsel and uh, when the, under Chairman Yatsko and the commission, including Commissioners Svinicki and Austin, were approved uh, going forward. I mean, one of the emphases the commission did was get these done, I think it was a five-year time frame. It doesn't mean all of them done in five, five years, but let's get the things done on it in a timely manner, that's what I commit to do. Good, because let the record show 2011 was the date. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, nothing's happening yet. So that's really good. Now, Chairman, you wanted to. Yeah, I just want to the correct record the record in my discussion with Senator Markey about the Office of Investigations. I want to be clear that I said that there is a preliminary draft memo that he was referring to. That's all. Okay, so now you're saying this document does exist. Yes, I always acknowledged it. I acknowledged it the entire time. I just want to be clear that that's, that's the Okay, well, we'll read back the record, and we will leave it in, and then we will correct what you said so that it's clear. I just want to say to all of you, you have really important jobs, and so will you, Chairman, when you go back to your atmosphere at the universities, because that's the minds of the future, and thank you for doing that. It's important. But I just want to say for those of you who are remaining on this commission and the new people who got in, um, I always, when I, whenever I 
lose my way sometimes, even around here. I go back, I read the Constitution, I read you know, what some of my predecessors said, I look at the different issues, whether it's environmental issues or civil rights issues or human rights issues. I read what experts have said, legal experts have said. And I think it, the, the most important thing for you to do is to go back to why this commission was founded. And it's so instructive to read what it says. It really is so clear that it's safety. And that if you're not, if that's not foremost in your mind, then that's just not what you should be doing. You should reset because it isn't about, you know, playing footsie with any operator. It isn't about, you know, the future of nuclear power, which many of us hope will find its way and be safe and be an answer to climate. And believe me, I mean, I think you heard that from colleagues. So we're looking for safety. We're looking uh, to make sure that we don't build plants on earthquake faults, and if they're there, they got to be retrofitted. They can't stay the way they are. It's too dangerous. So go back, and you'll get, I think, infused with even more energy, no pun intended, um, in the work you're about to pursue. So good luck to you, Chairman. I think one of the greatest things for you is you won't have to face me across this divide anymore. That will be a reason for celebration. And uh, for the rest of you, um, good luck. And we have an open door. And, uh, but the biggest open door is right here in this chamber, because there's nothing that we have to keep secret. We are you know, transparent here. And so thank you very, very much. Uh, so we recess to the call of the chair.